I think the next item we should move on to to take us through to one o'clock is on safer roads. This is work that I think, Sean, you've done some uh, investigation around. You want to leave some questions around? Yeah, so thank you very much, Chair. Um, the reason I wanted this to be on the agenda today is because I have done some work following up on work that Jenny Jones did previously, asking about hit and run casualties. And what we found when we got the numbers from the Met was just a steady increase in the number of hit and run crashes. Um, and a steady increase in the proportion of crashes that are hit and run. So it's, it's gone up in numbers, it's also gone up in proportion. Um, the number, the average since 2009 is a 60% increase in the number of incidents. Um, and it's been 40% since 2011. It's, it's definitely a, a clear trend. And I, I wanted to ask some questions about why you think that is um, and what's being done about it. So can, can I ask about the, what seems to be an emerging culture of drivers leaving the scene after a crash. Is that something that you've observed? Um, I, think, I think the first thing I would say is, um, on those figures, it's really important to make the point that the, the vast majority of that increase is taken up in the, in the slight injury. But the uh, difference I, between I, a slight injury and a serious injury when there's a road crash I, is not really I, a thing. You could be injured badly or not, depending I, on what your I think, head happens yeah, to be. I, I just think it's important to be clear about those stats if we're going to use the stats. I share, with you, I share with you con entirely a concern about the number of collisions mm. that happen on, on the streets of London. And there are, you know, there's a range of reasons why people don't stay and report at the scene of a, a you know, at the scene of an incident. Certainly from, from our perspective, there, there will be some where they will feel vulnerable as, as the individual and they will, they will not stay there. You've got a number of people that we find will report afterwards, but they want to do that once they've spoken to a solicitor or someone because they feel they've got some sort of culpability and we will get that. I think particularly prevalent with larger vehicles, and we have a lot of larger vehicles in London, they may not even be aware that what has happened, you know, if you're driving an articulated lorry, you may not even be aware that there has been some kind of, um, some kind of collision. There are no doubt within that group a number of what I would describe as criminal drivers. So they are criminal either because they're not properly insured, they're not properly licensed, their ownership of the vehicle is questionable, or they have drunk alcohol or they are intoxicated with drugs in some way or another. Um, I think there'll be some who will check, they'll see there's no injury in the go. So it's a, it's a broad range of individuals. I think it, kind of, it, it takes you to a larger issue about people's, um, I guess, sense of responsibility on the road. I mean, we have, as you will know, a very significant command that deals with policing of the roads. So the Roads Transport and Policing Command, which has the dual roles of the sort of traditional roads policing or traffic in, in the way we would describe it, and then obviously the work through and work with TfL around the, the surface transport infrastructure. Transport for London partly fund that, is that? Transport for London very significantly fund to the tune of about £93 million, pounds, I think, um, officers within there. But we, so we have a, um, a staffing level there that is, is this year just over, so 2,350 officers and PCSOs, so it's, it's about 1,600 police officers um, and, uh, and, and some PCSOs who are operating in that environment all the time. We also have a, well, I would honestly say a world-class serious collision investigation unit, which is a fairly significant team who deal with the, the fatal and the serious injury collisions um, and who provide a very, a very, very effective service. And then really it's working and how we attempt to, to prevent uh, these incidents is really working along a model which is around where we do identify drivers around education uh, to make people aware of the impact of their behaviour, obviously for lower end issues. There's the element of enforcement and we will identify hotspot areas, we will identify places where there's been um, you know, significant issues and we will enforce there. And then lastly, there's obviously the element which is around engineering because whilst the police can, we can respond and react and we can do some preventive activity, some of this is around the infrastructure and the, the nature of our roads and the nature of the, the users of our roads. That, that wouldn't affect whether someone stopped at the, the scene? No, it wouldn't affect that particular issue, yeah. but I see, I see 
the, the failing to stop and report in the broader context of the number of collisions that we are seeing that we're seeing in London. Okay, um, thank you very much. Can you, do you have any insight into how much this involves young people? You didn't really cover that. Not, in your... No, not specifically. Do you have data on that in terms of victims and perpetrators? I'm sure that I could get data on that. I don't have it in front of me now, so I don't want to, to speculate, but I can certainly find that out and let you know. So my, my data asks, um, well, since 2011, you've been able to provide um, assembly members with data by borough. And I yeah. think what's really noticeable about this data is that it varies so much. So you've got boroughs like Merton and Hounslow, mm -hmm. who've had a more than 100% increase in these incidents. And then you've got boroughs um, including Lewisham, Kensington, Greenwich, Southwark, Bexley and Bromley, yeah. who have got decreases, actually, mm -hmm. in these incidents. And I think what's really interesting is that um, Lewisham, Greenwich, Bexley and Bromley are contiguous boroughs. They're, they're in South East London. Is there yeah. something being done there that's maybe effective that you could learn from? Uh, possibly. And I, I mean, I, I don't, haven't seen that, so I think that would be something definitely to, to look at. We also have, um, in, as of January, a new system for us recording around collisions, uh, an automated system, which I think is going to give us some real opportunities. Um, so we will have much better and more effective data. The really other important point as well, because the system at the moment when an officer deals with a collision, is it's a paper trail that works around the place and eventually finds its way to TfL, which, which is where ultimately we're looking at the data around the road network. And that can take up to six months in some cases, whereas now with the new system, we will be able, that will be an instantaneous updating to Transport for London when the officer's report is, is, is um, sort of passed off by the supervisor. So I think that will give us a much richer set of data to understand precisely what is going on in a much more contemporary way. But certainly those, the, the areas that you spoke about there, it's definitely worth, I think, looking at why there is a disparity, because there's no obvious one that I can think of when you, you give those names as to why there'd be that disparity. Okay, so you've, you've touched on there the, um, the inability, and we've been asking questions about this, you know, how many of these drivers who leave the scene of a crash are brought to justice. Yeah. And the police have been unable to tell us, both yes. myself and Assembly Member Pigeon have been asking questions yes. about this system. That's right. Um, you say that this will come back in, come in live and be able to be, yeah. you'll be able to interrogate these things from January. Will that only apply to cases that occur from January or will it go back? No, it won't go back. Linked no, it won't, no, no, it won't go, we won't go, but there won't be a retrospective. It will be from January all the reporting of any, any collision by an officer will be on that system and that will then give us a much better data set and a much more accurate data set to work from. So from like the first quarter of next year we'll be able to look at the percentage of these Correct. drivers that are, that are being... Because yeah. that would... I think if drivers knew that they were going to be apprehended and there must be yeah. quite a good chance of them being apprehended with CCTV... Well, there certainly should be, yeah, yeah I agree. And, um, but there's been a couple of really prominent cases lately where you know, victims who've had life-changing injuries, just feel like there's not been enough investigation. Mm. The driver's gone, nobody's found them. Um, a young boy in my own borough, Camden, was killed mm. a few days ago, and there's still no sign that, that there's going to be an arrest there from a motorcyclist who left the scene. Um, people feel very that that's injustice going on, but if it right. is a high rate of clear-up, people will feel deterred from doing it. Yes, that, I no, I understand that entirely. Yeah. Um, so the other question was um, the road... Roads and Transport Policing Command. Yes. Um, we were told in January that there were going to be, I think, 40 more officers this year and 80 by next spring. Has that increase happened? 40 more officers? We were told this by the previous mayor in January. Uh, I don't know that. No, I don't recognise that. That's not something I... Are the numbers increasing in that? Yeah. The numbers, as I say, so, so if you take the total number, for 14-15 it was 2350, for 15-16 it was 2355, and for this current year that we're in it's 2356. So that's so not an increase at all? There's very little fluctuation, but it's a very significant, very significant command. Oh, is, will it be okay if I get the, num get the promise that was made and check? Yeah, that'd be helpful, yeah, out. by all means. That's very worrying. Um, so, um, I think my final question is about Vision Zero, mm. which is in the new, I don't know, maybe the Deputy Mayor or would want to answer this question. It's in the new Peace and Crime Plan that you're adopting, a Vision Zero approach, um, the goal being to reduce the levels of death and uh, road injury. Can you explain how that differs from current approaches to uh, road safety? 
Division Zero approach is the, the approach of a uh, joint partnership approach that's been set out with, you know, the Deputy Mayor Val Shawcross. It's not, it's not a different, it's just this is a connection through the police and crime plan through the, the uh, priorities of TfL. Um, it's, in, you know, it's, it's looking at enforcement, which is obviously the, the role of the Metropolitan <coughs> Police, but it's also looking at better education and also some engineering out some of the risks and some of the vulnerabilities around roads and how you can actually reduce, um, reduce uh, serious injuries and deaths on the road. So it's part, of, it's part of the joined up approach around City Hall to make sure that the police and crime plan plays a big part in providing, providing the Metropolitan Police's role in um, reducing serious deaths and injuries on the roads. He's much closer working with TfL Absolutely. on this issue. Yeah. That's really good to hear. Um, I think that's all my questions one, for now. One last, thank you. Yeah. Last question from Andrew. Yeah. Yeah. Good. 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 Good.